Okay, so could you talk about some of the discrimination you faced when you were a professional footballer 25 years ago? Yeah, um, yeah when I uh, started, first started playing, um, the, I, I, you know, some of my peers, we had other players, uh, to have racist jokes and, and being in a minority it's hard to, to challenge that sort of thing, you just had to, to get on with it. Some of them, yeah, some of them you, know, you, you laugh at, some of them were a little bit over the top. Um, and then you know, you went out onto the pitch, and uh, yeah, I just I played in an environment where people would throw bananas at me and just had monkey chants, and people would spit at me, and uh, and it wasn't just an individual; it seemed like a whole crowd, and that was the, that was a really scary thing. I think if there was a, an individual in the crowd was was doing that, well, if an individual did it in the crowd now, I think the peer, people around them would would challenge it and, and stop it happening. But as soon as one person did it, then everybody thought it was all right to join in. And so, one, you felt intimidated, you felt frightened as well. Uh, it was really quite scary. But, you know, I was on the pitch to, to do a job, and so I had to focus on, on the job. Um, I saw lots of other players who reacted um, the, to it, and, uh, and sometimes I wish that I had reacted to it, but a lot of those players didn't carry on playing, they failed to have careers. You know, they were deemed to have a, a chip on their shoulder, was the thing that people used to say about them when they reacted to it. So I didn't realise if I wanted to have a career, I had to kind of put up with it. Um, but it was always something that cut quite deep and it had a, a, an effect on me. And when I had children, you know, then you realise the responsibility you have to your children, not just in football, but in society, for them to not have to go through what I went through. You want to look after your children, you want your children to be safe. And how do you think that's changed for your son Liam today? Because he plays a lot of football now. Yeah, he does. He's a he's professional footballer now. And he, he, when he goes and plays a football match, he knows that he's not going to get people calling in names. But Liam had it when he was at Bristol City when he was 18 years old. He um, was getting racial abuse from a, another player and the referee didn't do anything about it throughout the game. Lost his temper, he actually karate kicked the player in the chest and got sent off. And, um, and, he, was, and he talks about it now and he's sitting well up about it. Not that the guy was giving him racist abuse, but because the referee who heard it wouldn't act and do anything about it. And people always say to me, you know, you'll never get rid of racism. And well, I say to him, well, I never, you never thought that Barack Obama would be president, you know, the black president of the United States of America. Things will change. It's just a matter of when, as long as enough people challenge it in the right way uh, to implement that change, then, then that's the way things are going to uh, be turned around. So it's important for me to, even if it doesn't happen within my lifetime, which I hope it does, that if it doesn't, it certainly should happen within my son's lifetime. Uh, so to Brian. Uh, the West Ham Academy is famous throughout the world of football. You could say that uh, West Ham won the World Cup for England. Um, how important is it for West Ham to find and nurture local talent today? Oh, it's crucial and that's something that the Foundation the Academy work very closely with. But we look for obviously local talent because in London and East London has produced a lot of players over the years and you've touched on West Ham winning the World Cup. If you asked any long-standing West Ham fans, especially my granddad, that's it. He wouldn't say England won the World Cup, he'd say West Ham did. So the club have got a great reputation for producing young local talent, but also now with what we're doing in the foundation and we're trying to grow that and it could be players and young boys and or girls with the ladies side, but with the academy in Geneva who may be able to get across and, and play for the academy. Yeah, it's crucial for local talent and, and what we do in the integration with the academy and the foundation. So to all of you, how do you think the move to the Olympic Stadium will impact West Ham United and the Show Racism the Red Card campaign? I joined this club two years ago because I was incredibly excited about the journey the club were going on. Um, whether or not you're a West Ham fan or not, I think it's irrelevant. I think what you have to do is, is use these moments, use it as a catalyst. So we're using all the energy that the club is feeling at the minute it's going to have the best stadium in the country, probably in the world. And what comes with that is a fantastic energy that you can use for things like uh, partnering with Show Racing and the Red Card. Because ultimately it's around the message they can give to the young people and uh, how we can try and change, change attitudes and cultures within um, areas that, as Leroy said, you'd hope that within a generation people are thinking, I oh, remember about racism. Oh, God. You know, that's all right. That's our mandate is to try and really change. Uh, attitudes. West Ham have always been a working class club supported by the local community. Uh, as the money in football grows, how is West Ham ensuring it stays connected with its roots? Roots history, however you want to word it, is incredibly important and especially so uh, in terms of uh, West Ham. I suppose how that's then now integrated into your work within the community. Communities change. 
communities really are, represent, uh, are, are a representation of, of whoever lives in them. Now, what we need to do better and what we need to work harder on is to make those communities more cohesive with um, some of the integration pieces of work we do. So to include all of our communities and to try and engage with all of our communities using, as we've said, the power of football to do that. How do you suggest students go about increasing equality and inclusion in their day-to-day -day lives? Be brave. Yeah, definitely. Be brave, challenge. Um, it's a lot different now in terms of society where um, there is legislation to uh, protect people. There are laws in place now to protect people and people have woken up to what is right, what is wrong. However, um, that doesn't mean that people don't still um, feel a certain way. Now, as young people in the community, young people in society, I would say you should know what is right and what is wrong and you should know what you should challenge and what, what you should be brave about saying, look, actually, that's not, that's not right. I'll give, I'll give, um, I'll give young people one piece of advice when you hear something which you know isn't right, is to, is to challenge it, but challenge it in the right way through debate. And the best way to ask people when people say things uh, is to say, one, how do you know? Um, and you'll be surprised. They don't. They haven't got any evidence to, to back it up. And then to discuss it, how have you come to that conclusion? And to work through it. And it'd be interesting to see where they end up. Because, you know what, 99.9% .9 of people don't really want to think negatively about other people. These are things that society has um, encouraged through, through the media, through uh, through social media as well. Yeah, just touching on what Joe and Leroy mentioned, just never be afraid to check and challenge in the right way and be brave. I think that's one of the, the most important things we can take away. And you can change the world, whether it's your little world at three or four people you're there in that moment in time, or you may go on to impact the world on a greater scale. But young people now have got the power to change, change things and be brave and never be afraid to check and challenge. Like Leroy was saying, it's a, a, a debate format and have a discussion because a lot of it comes down to knowledge and then you can talk to people, find out about people and actually get to know who Joe and who Leroy and who Brian are and then make an informative decision and go from there. But yeah, I think yeah. that's most important. It's amazing because Joe, myself and Brian and us really come from totally different backgrounds, totally different cultures, but we all have the same values. You know, we all look differently, but we have the same values mm -hmm. in life. And that's what it's about. We look different. I'm really good looking. No, I'm not so good looking. <laughs> but it's funny that when you start talking to people, whether they look different or not, whether they're Muslim, whether they're Hindu, it comes down to it, where we have the same values. And it's amazing that people know what's right. They know what's wrong. They want to treat people well, so they, they're treated well in return. And, and that's, what, that's all that matters. Okay, that's all our questions. Thank you very much. No Thank you. Great. Thank you.